What is going on, family God? Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother DJ Sam Brock. And we're here for another day to get together, amen, to get the Word of God in us, working through us, and really setting the tone for the whole day. If you get the Word of God in you first, for the first part of your day, whatever that first part is, I believe with all my heart that you will have a day according to the will of God over your life, in your life, and through your life. Not a perfect day but a perfected day, a day that was created for you so we could be glad and rejoice in the day that we do have together. So God bless you. My name is DJ Sam Rock, a.k.a. Brother Sam. God bless you. If this is your first time watching the Morning Devo, I'm just here Mondays through Fridays um, trying to really encourage you, trying to motivate you to get into the Word of God, trying to push you forward, right, like a brother would push any um, family member, push you forward in the victory that God has for you. Not to be, you know, dragging you down or back or reminding you of your old ways or accusing you or pointing fingers at what you're doing now that's not really good for you. No, uh, I let that, that's the job of the Holy Spirit to convince and convict. My job is just to preach the gospel, to spread the word of God. As God lays it to me, I'm going to lay it out to everybody that's willing to listen. There's no forcing here. There's no, you have to, you know, do this and you have to do that. Uh, rules and regulations or whatever that may be to you, whatever that might mean to you, that's not my goal. My goal is to reach as many people with the gospel message, the message of freedom, actually, to as many people as possible. That is my goal. So welcome to the Morning Devo. Everybody, everybody's welcome. God bless you, Brother Damon. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Amen. So it's good to see you as well. So listen, if you know somebody right now that does not have social media, no problem. Send them straight to the website, soulwinnerswithaz.org. Why not? They could go there. The homepage has everything they need to get involved with what's happening right now in real time. They also have a Bible attached right there to the homepage. And they also have the podcast player. And they could just save that in their browser. So that way, every time we go live, um, they could go to the browser so winners with a z.org would pop up, sell our radio network, and then they could join they could join us from right there. So I'm excited for today. Today I woke up with a thought in my mind, and then that thought matched up with the scripture. Um, you know, um, you know, I just see things a little different than others. I call myself a Christian not because you know it's the thing to do. Because it's definitely not popular. Uh, it's not a popular thing to call yourself a Christian anymore. It's not respected as it used to be when I was a kid, right? And um, the media and the world system and whatever, they actually call us haters. Because we are trying to walk in the morality of God. We're trying to move forward and be pure. Purity is like a woo. You, what do you mean you're pure? How could you be pure in this impure world and stuff like that? And people are getting that sauce and they're, t- they're eating that sauce, they're drinking that sauce and say, well, there's no way I might as well just give in and give up, you know, experiment here, experiment there, do this, do that with this person or, you know, have fun now. Then when I get older, I'll get serious with God. You know, people are drinking that sauce. So I thought about that early this morning. I literally woke up two and a half hours ago and then I went back to sleep because I woke up and said why am I awake so early I looked at I felt that I overslept so I woke up and looked at my my clock and I was like oh um I have a couple more hours or hour at least um so then that popped up in my head and then of course you know there must have been the Lord because I was scrolling through um, my app and the Ephesians 5 scripture popped up and I said well there it is um it's Ephesians 5 and 3 We're going to be reading that. That's what we're going to be into today. We're going to be talking about purity. Purity will always be in style. Never goes out of style. I was looking for a picture to put up and for the banner. And I I saw the picture of a young lady, that lady that I put on the um, banner. I don't know who she is. It just pops up in my photo um, when you, you know, looking up photos. But it gives me the idea that they were trying to show because I looked at modesty and they try to show modesty. She's looking down, a little bashful or whatever. And that's still in style. Being modest, being pure is still in style. I don't know why young women or why young men think that's going to go out of style. Still in style. It's still the way to be. If you are pure, right, for the most part, um, some people might take that as, what do you mean pure? I mean, like, you're kind of like innocent still. You still have your innocence. Let's just leave it like that. Congratulations. 
You know, that is honorable, that is respectful, that is in style, that is still the way to go. Because then you could, you are really freeing yourself up from a lot of baggage that would try to weigh you down and tie you down. Um, a lot of people that are younger than me won't understand that because they're be like, man, we need to have fun. We need to do what everybody else is doing. But if you're pure at this point of your life, from whatever age, you could be young, um, teenager, young adult, even into your adulthood a little bit. Amen. For whatever reasons, you're in purity. Purity is still in style. My wife literally made a song called Purity a while back. Powerful song. And it's the battle between, um, you know, what your flesh wants to do and what the spirit is um, offering you and to have that balance and to walk in purity. Purity will never run out of style. It will never be out of style, I should say. So how to defend yourself from impurity? You might be asking yourself, how is that possible? Is that even possible? Can I do that? Listen, I can't do it. Sam can't do it on my own. I need Holy Spirit God to help me in that area every single day. People say, but you're a Christian. Oh, and? So that means that since I'm a Christian, everything around me disappears? No, that's not true. I have to be conscious. I have to be present. I have to be in the word and I have to be focused on the author and finisher of my faith to keep myself pure, as pure as possible in this impure world. You know, like it's I always say this. I'm trying to walk straight in a land that's crooked. Right. You try to walk straight in a world that's slanted. And that's not possible other than being possible, made possible by Holy Spirit God in us, working through us. And giving us the power to get it done on this side of eternity. I'm telling you, God is amazing at what he does in a life that says yes to him. And kind of like no to this world. Good morning, Sister Joyce. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. It's good to see you, my sister. So, Ephesians 5, we're going to be in that today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or prayer requests, or anything like that, when it concerns purity, please don't hesitate. Any question is a good question. Uh, If you don't ask something and you want to ask it, well, you kind of like answered your question. You're afraid to ask. And if you're afraid to ask or you're afraid to put a comment or concern or anything like that, maybe you might even disagree with with what's happening here. Don't don't be afraid to chime in. There's no arguing, debating here. We're just going to go and see what the word of God says. Amen. Because if this is truly true, 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 then what, what do we have to lose? We have everything to gain and nothing to lose. Matthew, how are you doing? God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Amen. Welcome. So we're going to take an opportunity to pray. We're going to pray and ask the God of heaven and earth to come into this Morning Devo and continue to stay with us and be present as we read his word. So that way we could get that Holy Spirit power and that understanding and that knowing inside of us um, that you know what I'm talking about if you're a believer to stay and really teach us what he wants to teach us this morning I'm telling you everything to gain nothing to lose when you're walking in the word of God when you're walking in purity it will always be in style I hope and pray that by the time my daughter is a teenager she will understand that modesty is great honesty is always going to be the best policy and living in purity although it might not be easy But the benefits and the satisfaction of being pure and being different and all that that God has to offer her will be just so, it will outweigh so many more things. And my other daughter as well. Amen. Just hoping to God that I could get to see that. Amen. In real real life. So, in real time, I should say. So let's pray. Father, I thank you today for another day, a new day. A day that we could actually be pure. That we don't have to live in our past. And we don't have to worry about tomorrow. But we live for today because you are with us, in us, and working through us. I pray forward a hedge of protection for every single listener, every single viewer at the sound of my voice. I pray Holy Spirit power that we will be released to every single person right now at the sound of my voice. And I pray, Lord God, that although we live in this world, Lord Jesus, that is so you know, out of whack and everything goes. Father God, but you said not among your people. That should not be named among us, your children. And you are the only one that gives us the right to be called children of God. So I thank you, Lord Jesus, for calling us your children, uh, for activating your faith that is placed within us and activating that to live in this life. Amen. So I pray a hedge of protection. I pray health, strength, and protection to every single person that's connecting now or is going to connect later. And I speak forth Arquin Angels. 
I send them forth right now in the name of Jesus, ministering angels, warring angels, the host of heaven to move on behalf of every single listener, every single viewer in their families, in their lives, in their workplace, in their home, wherever they may find themselves in whatever situation, Father God, help us to walk pure and to be pure according to your word and according to your cause for this earth, right? In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. Let's take a minute to share this out with as many people as you can. If you know somebody right now that does not have social media, but you want them to be in on this, send them straight to the website, soulwinnerswithaz.org, and they could really get connected with what we're doing right now in real time. I'll be right back. Amen. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. Thank you for sharing with as many people as you can. And I just want to share it to one more group because I know they would really enjoy this um, Morning Devo. So I did it. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 3. Let there be no sexual, sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. And there's a comma after sexual immorality. And then it says impurity. So it's a comma there. So let there be no sexual morality, comma, impurity, comma, or greed among you, period. Such sins, plural, right? So you have sexual morality and impurity are sins. Greed is a sin. Such sins have no place among God's people, period. Well, that's a whole big discussion right then and there, right? Now, since we know this now, and if you didn't know that, now you know. Since we know this, so help me understand, right? Just help me. If somebody could just dive in and help me. Why is it that so many brothers and sisters are living every single which way that the Bible says not to live? And then they look at another brother and say, well, you know, we believe and we trust in God. And it doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm always biting my tongue and holding back what I Oh, you know, sometimes I want to strangle some people. I'm like, what are you talking about? Because every single person around that type of environment that are looking at Christians, saying they're Christians, <clears throat> and then the world comes in, <clears throat> people who don't believe, people who don't have a relationship with our Lord Jesus, and then they see us in general doing the same thing they're doing. What is what is your witness? What is your testimony? It doesn't make any sense. Are you walking in purity or not? Do you do you or do you love Jesus or not? Because the Bible is clear, we can't love the things of this world and love the love the Lord at the same time. It's not, um, you know, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't line up with the scriptures. Ephesians five and three. If you read the whole chapter of Ephesians chapter five, an amazing chapter. The whole Bible is amazing. When it comes to purity, let there be no sexual morality. Right now, uh, I believe that's like the. The fourth largest religion in the whole world, sexuality, the religion of sex. I believe that because it's Judaism, Christianity, um, uh, how you call it, uh, the Muslim faith is, um, yeah, the Muslims' faiths. Um, wow, well, I'm drawing a blank right now. And then sexuality. So, you know, what is it? Is it Islamic belief? Is it Christianity? Is it Judaism? Or is it sex? Because sex is big, so big that it's actually uh, making moves on this planet. I was going to say just the United States, but it's all over. 
There's only a small percentage of the population of the whole entire planet that's making a, such a loud move when it comes to sexuality. So it's pretty much a religion. People are following the concept, the precepts. It's really a fleshly thing. But it's mentioned in the scriptures more, more and more than I haven't counted, but it's more than two or three times for sure. So here in Ephesians 5 and 3, let there be no sexual morality. Now, if there should be none of that, and people are in that, that means there's a struggle going on. That means there's a power struggle between the flesh and the spirit. Because God knows, does he know so much more? Yes, he does, of what damage we may be causing ourselves. Now, I'm, you're looking at a damaged man, a damaged person, damaged young kid that when I was a kid, I was damaged through my eyes and I saw something that I should not have seen that those images stood with me and I still remember those images um, let's see, uh, 40 something years later, oh my God, right? Like it's crazy. Those images, how they just, you, they, you see them through the eyes and then like make a print in your brain somewhere. It's like a memory bank. And I don't know how to press the delete button other than to ask God to, uh, remove those thoughts, right? And to keep those thoughts captive. You know, now they're, now they're in captivity. Now they cannot come back to me and haunt me anymore. Or, or try to make me do some impulsive things because God has those thoughts. But wow, since I was young, and then um, those, those images turned into thoughts, those thoughts turned into actions, those actions caused a, a bad sexual habit um, that I had, an addiction actually, that, caused, that ruined my life up to the point where Jesus saved me. My life was ruined. I was destined to, to just throw everything out including my life and my purity was out the window. And I remember, and people probably won't believe me, but I don't know what youth it was, but I remember I was talking to the youth about um, my mess-ups, my impurity. And to some of the young guys, they were like, that's cool, man. Like, what are you, what are you crying about? I said, I'm crying because had I been pure until the time I got married, it would have been such a different situation, right? I'm not saying that, you know, that it's not a different situation. Now, I, I'm just saying that it would have been so much different in my life. Amen. Um, now, every now and then, because of soul ties, I know this is a heavy thing for a morning diva, right? But God put this on my heart, and I know it's for someone. Soul ties, the people who you practice sexual morality with. Before marriage. So let's get it clear. God created sex. God created marriage. God created marriage between a husband and a wife. And he endorses, you know, intimacy between a husband and a wife. So he's not against sex per se, but he's against sexual immorality per se, impurity or greed among us, right? So he designed it. So let's get that clear. So had I waited, right, to the proper time, proper person that God had designed, but I had no waiting. I had no power to wait before Jesus. So <clears throat> it's like <clears throat> here or there, I'm like, man, the enemy is good at what he does, trying to entice you, trying to cause you to do things based on feelings. And if you stay in your feelings, you will reap the results of making decisions because of your feelings. But if you stay in faith, you will reap the result, the results of Staying in faith and faith in the Lord Jesus, not in faith in faith, not in faith in idolatry, not faith in a person, not faith in the ministry. No, faith in the Lord Jesus and he'll help us on the way. I literally asked God when I got saved, OK, because I knew I was all wrapped up into all kind of impurity. Right. So I immediately after I got saved, no lie, God is my witness. I asked him, how are you going to replace this feeling, this sensation, and this thing that I love to do or like to do so much, how are you going to replace that? And God said, well, you want me to replace it or not? Because he did replace it. He filled me up with something that satisfied me more than those things of the world that had given me temporary satisfaction. Amen. So at any given moment, I could get what I call a supernatural high. I could watch people drink, smoke, or whatever. It won't really entice me anymore. It doesn't tempt me to do it. As a matter of fact, um, I, I don't even think it's cool anymore, but when I'm around those people, I could get into my supernatural high and 
get kind of like on the level, but in a pure way, if that makes any sense. Um, people will ask you, <clears throat> you go to a bar, a bar where there's alcohol, and people look at you and say, what are you drinking? And uh, I'll call a bartender over, so let me get a ginger ale with lemon, and let me get a, a Sprite and lemonade, stuff like that. And they're like, oh, because they're waiting, man. They, they're they waiting, say, oh, he's at the bar. He must be drinking alcohol. No, there's other things at the bar other than alcohol, and there's other ways to quench your thirst, thirst other than beer and alcohol. So I choose not to go that route. It's not for me. Baba says, such sins have no place among God's people. So it has no place among my people. That's what God says. It has no place among me, among my wife, my family, whatever. Now, uh, I love it. The other day I heard a, a man say, listen, I'm a grown man. I could do whatever I want. Right? He said, but I won't cheat on my wife. I won't practice sexual morality. I won't do this, that, that. Why? Because he's free. True freedom, listen, says this. I could do whatever I want, but if I want to live in true freedom, I don't have to do that. There's no need for it. Think about it. There must be a need for people to be in sexual morality. Uh, my friend and my brother in Christ, uh, Brother Reese Johnson, is always telling me, listen, people don't do better because they don't know better. So when we were younger, and I agree with him, we were younger, we were doing what we knew to do because we didn't know anything better to do. So uh, if you grew up in like in a neighborhood like I grew up, we only knew what we could see. But we were amazed after we got outside of our projects, out of our environment, how other people were living. Like there was life outside of the projects and we were amazed, always thrown back by fancy cars, people who were eating at fancy restaurants, like walking distance from where we lived. And people were like going about their life with, you know, they had more money than us. They had cars, you know, they dressed better than us. And we would look at this and say, wow. And we would go back to the neighborhood and say, man, we could do that. We could do that. But then we fell into this thing, this mindset of, oh, no, we can't. Who said the enemy had us like on lock? Our, our minds are locked, not our bodies. We, we could have did anything. We literally watched other people do other things that we wanted to do. And then that grew uh some kind of thing in us. It wasn't jealousy. It was like ambition, like to really do what other people were doing. And then, thank you, Jesus. A lot of us got out of that mindset of we're, we're in a struggle. We're in a struggle. We're in a struggle. Some people stood behind. Some people got up and got out. Amen. Some people serve the Lord now that I grew up with. Some people don't. But uh, for the most part, most of my friends that got out, they're living their lives, right? Um, they have careers. They have families. They broke out of the whole um you know, poverty mindset, and they're living their lives according to what they know to be better. So if you're listening or you're watching right now and you're saying, listen, I don't know how to be pure. I don't know what you're talking about. How, how is that possible? And some people might also be saying, I messed up already. So what's the use? I'll tell you what's the use, and I'll tell you how you can be pure. You follow what God says to do and ask him. Please don't be afraid to ask God the deep things that you might think is too deep for God. Ask him to replace anything that's really before him, that you're placing before him as he's knocking on the door of your heart. He, literally, he doesn't stop knocking until you make a decision whether you want to open the door for him or close it. If you want to keep the door closed, I don't know if he stops knocking, but I know he won't break down the door to your heart. Ask him. Ask the Lord Jesus right now and say, I want to be pure from this point forward. I don't want to be in adultery. I don't want to be in um, sexual morality. I don't want to be a greedy person, right? I don't want to be in impurity. Help me out and replace whatever that thing is, whatever that situation is, whatever that habit, whatever that addiction is with your spirit. And just see what happens. You don't have nothing to lose. People are like, oh, I can't ask God that. Who said? Why not? What's going on? Like, who's giving you this information that you could say this, you can't say that? Like, it's incredible how much things we make up when it comes to God. Oh, no, God God won't hear that prayer. Oh, oh God won't listen to me. Oh, God won't hear me. Uh, I want to know who said. Really, I really want to know who said. I don't know why I have a video here playing for no reason. Amen. So, go to God. Ask Him. Ephesians chapter 5. Read the whole chapter for yourself. And the power of God's word is like this. You read it, 
You can read it with your mind, but when you read, there's a difference between when you speak it out of your own mouth. You know, unless you are uh, uh, mute, so that you can't, and God can still know that your mind is reading and your mind is projecting the scriptures. You're really, you're reading and you're thinking and you're saying something by your mind if you're mute. So let there be no sexual morality, impurity, or greed among you, among a Christian, a brother or sister in the Lord. And if you're struggling in that area, right? Then another thing that the devil is really um, good at, shame and guilt, putting that on us. Do you know that when we got born again, the shame and guilt is gone? Where are you getting the shame and guilt from? If you're trapped or you're involved with your boyfriend or girlfriend right now, and you're a believer, a Christian, you might be in leadership even, and you are going at it. Sexual morality, impurity, greed, everything, and you live now your guilt and shame, where is that coming from? You think God is giving you that guilt and shame? Or does he want you to just confess your sins to one another, like the scripture says, and you will be healed, you will be forgiven because you confess your sins to one another. Now you're going to get help. As soon as you say, I did this wrong, I need help, I, I, I forgive me, or you repent, you turn from those wicked ways and you turn to the righteousness of God, you are already walking towards your victory. You have the victory already, it's just that you kind of like didn't get it. Amen? It can happen to the best of us and it can happen to any of us. Amen? Nobody has arrived at this place of, oh, I don't do this anymore because I found a way. No, nobody's finding ways. We have Holy Spirit God that's giving us a way and leading us and guiding us into all truth, all righteousness. Amen. So if I'm going around saying, oh, I got this, that will never happen to me without the power of Holy Spirit. I'm just lying to myself and I'm setting myself up to fail. And I'm going to crash and burn just like anybody else that would think that we could do this without God. They will crash and burn too. But if you're in a situation, please don't be carrying guilt on one shoulder and shame on another shoulder, but still moving forward in the traditions of the church or just as a man because you think you or you feel you have to do that or you're trying to hide your sin. Do you realize that when you are in the house of God, a house of worship around, around other lights on the earth, that every sin which really show up, the darkness really shows up? And we could see it. People could see if I walked in darkness, people would see that right away on me because we're lights. We're lights of this world. So darkness and light, you know, light will shine upon all the darkness and expose things. Why? Because God designed it that way because he loves us. He doesn't want us to hide out. He doesn't want us to hide our sin among the brothers and sisters. It's bare. It's made bare to his eyes. But you know what I mean. Some people are hiding out in the church even. Come out of there. It's not worth it because at the end time, can you imagine your last day? You've been hiding all this stuff and just 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 happened to one of my favorite um, apologists, my favorite evangelists. And I've been following this man for years and he dies and this big scandal comes out because he was hiding his stuff. He was living a double life for whatever reason. I don't know why. I don't know nothing. Other than that it came out public and you could read it. And I don't even want to mention his name because it hurts still. I'm like, wow. And it's almost like you let me down. Because imagine I spoke this man's name so many times. I witnessed to his, um, he's from the culture of the Indian culture. I mentioned his name among other Indian cultures, people that were from India um, when I was trying to reach them with the gospel, mentioned his name, they looked him up. They were amazed of his testimony. <clears throat> All that. <clears throat> he wrote a tremendous amount of books. He wrote um, just articles. Blah, like He blessed my life. God used him. And nobody's going to take away the blessing that he made and the impact he made in my life. But now, knowing what I know now, knowing what the world knows now, um, it's just difficult to comprehend. Like, Why would people hide their stuff instead of confessing it? Taking some time off from ministry if you have to and getting things back right with God so that when, when you come back, you're going to be walking in, a, in purity. You're not going to be in sexual morality anymore. You're not going to be greedy and you're going to be in the place that God wants you to be among God's people. It's so much. It's worth so much more than hiding your stuff. Come out, out of there. Listen, I'll be the first one. Um, to admit some things if I'm struggling with. Like right here. I did, I literally did a podcast live 
uh, and I was going through my weaknesses. Not a lot of people would dare to do that. I don't have a lot of followers. Maybe if I had a million or two million followers, then maybe it would be um, harder for me to admit my weaknesses because maybe I might think I arrived somewhere. Um, Hopefully not. And hopefully, you know, God is keeping me humble and I'm stay humble. I want to humble myself. I don't want God to humble me. Amen. But I need to walk in what God has for me. If I mess up, you know, I repent, get back up and keep on moving. There's no time to stay on the ground. There's no time to stay back where the enemy wants us. It's time to move forward, though. We have today and we have the, you know, whatever days, amount of days God has for us, we can move forward. So come out of sexual morality. And that can mean all kind of things to all different kind of people, amen. Um, it can mean different things to any kind, you know, different kind of people. Yes, this is being recorded, brother Matthew. You could watch this at any time, or you could also listen to the podcast anytime. And on the podcast, it's downloadable. And the video on YouTube, or if you have the paid subscription, you could download the video on YouTube. It will be available later on today on YouTube as well. So God bless you. Have a great day. Thank you for watching with us. So that's all I had. How do you defend yourself against impurity? How to defend yourself against impurity? The word of God. How do you do it? And if it's working. If you're doing it outside of the word of God. And you say, oh man, I finally figured out a way to stop doing this, stop doing that. I call that willpower. Quick story and I'll leave you like this. I know people like me where we say we're done and we keep on talking, right? Quick story because it just popped up in my head. Before I got saved, um, I had this willpower that when I first my first year of marriage, I said I'm going to be straight, I'm not going to you know cheat on my wife or anything. It was willpower. It was the power that I thought I had to stop doing this, that, and the third. It didn't work. Make a long story short, it didn't work. It was my willpower, and that's actually flesh power. Because if it's not with God's power, then you're just activating in the flesh, emotion. You know, you're making decisions. Uh, I thought I was doing good things. I thought I was helping people out, but I, I was actually hurting everybody involved. So if you're drinking that sauce and you're thinking like, oh, I don't need God. I got this on my own. I'll be praying for you and um, just come on into the body of Christ from wherever you live. There should be a body of Christ, a body of believers, a body of people who believe in Jesus and in his forgiveness, his salvation, his resurrection, all that Open arms will be waiting for you because sooner or later that's going to come to a a no go. It's going to come to a stop. Your willpower is only as powerful as you are. And pretty much, uh, I don't know about you, but I can't control the whole day of my life. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. If tomorrow comes, um, I can go back to yesterday. I have today and I'm still unsure, right, of what's going to happen today. I have no control over a lot of things. Over a lot of things. Amen. So if that's you, please. Ephesians chapter 5. Read the whole verse. But we're in uh, Ephesians 5 and 3. Um, that there be no sexual morality. I mean, I don't know how else to say it except how the scripture says it. And the people who are. I was thinking about a person that I know well. And I was like, wow. All those years that I've known this person. Um, this person was literally struggling in that area and although i was part of it it just it's just mind-blowing to me that as i got older and realized that this person was really struggling in that area um that it must not be easy and whole i i, I literally pray for this person um pretty often um, when i start getting a feeling from my past i start immediately praying it's called so time man um, you're connected to every person that you practice sexual morality with. There's a connection somehow. And I don't know if God breaks that off. Somebody will have to teach me how do you break off a soul tie or how do you break off the parts and the members of the people that you were involved in through your life until you get born again, right? What happens? Because I believe those are consequences of sin. And I don't know if the consequences disappear. Somebody could teach me something different. Maybe it's called deliverance. Um, but I still have a memory bank. So I don't know how you remove memories and all that stuff. So I've been thinking about that. So I always pray often for this person 
that hopefully this person has made things right with them and the Lord, um, the person and the Lord, and that they're freed from that sexual morality, like legitly, like free from it because uh, I kind of experienced the consequences. It's not cool. Uh, I'm a miracle that you're looking at that I have no STD, sexually transmitted diseases, or I'm, in, I'm not dying from a fatal like AIDS or something like that because of my poor decisions that I made when I was younger before Christ. That's all I'm going to say. Um, so I know this is a lot for a morning Devo, but um, it's not that I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. It's just that I believe that God impressed this on my heart, uh, waking me up early, giving me a thought, and then looking at my app and the scripture is there. Can't make this up, man. So please, walk in freedom. Freedom, and it actually, to be pure is more fun than to be impure. Um, it's like having like no beef with nobody and you walk through any neighborhood you feel like that freedom like oh I can walk through here I don't have no problems with nobody right that type of thing same thing with walking in purity like I'm gonna walk through here um cause if you don't have if you're not if you haven't done anything in these areas right like deeply done it then you have to struggle doing it over and over again and not to do it like there won't be no temptation as heavy as it would once you um, tasted the world I'd rather taste and see that the Lord is good um, because I already tasted the world and um, although it might have tasted good in the beginning or during the time that I was in the world being of the world right um, but now it left a bad taste in my mouth it's almost like diet soda that when diet sodas first came out they would leave you that aftertaste that's what the world's leaving left in my mouth, an aftertaste. And I don't like it. Amen. But I love the people in in the world per se. But I just can't do join up with them and do the things of the world, if that makes any sense. Because I'm trying to walk in purity. It could be done only through the Holy Spirit. There's no other way that I could see that it could be done. But you could do it too. If you're not if you haven't made your confession or if you haven't made your relationship with the Lord. Do it today, please. Like impurity, sexual morality, greed, all that stuff is not going to go away. Even after you get saved, even after you make things right with the Lord. So you might have to just admit that you're a sinner. Admit that you are in sexual morality, impurity, or greed. Admit it to the Lord right now. Might as well. You have everything to gain, nothing to lose. Trust me. I've done it so many years ago. And make things right with him and ask him to change you. That's it. Ask him to forgive you. Ask the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth to forgive you for your sexual morality, impurity, or greed, and greed. And ask him to transform your life, change you, give you the power to get it done. Amen. And Sister Joyce is helping me out. Thank you so much. And you can go to Ephesians chapter 4, 22 and 23. Put on the new life in Christ. I'm begging you. Like, I realize, I come to a point where, listen... God doesn't have to beg. I could do the begging for your life to be changed. I'm telling you. Um, I see it all the time with the younger generation. Some some still, <clears throat> my generation still struggling. Some people are older. But, um, like, I know that the world is lying. And offering you all kinds of things right now that when those things run out, and crash and burn, you're going to be crying at some altar one day, realizing that it's not that you wasted time, it's that the enemy, the devil, the one who hates you, even the ones who are allegiance with, this, with, the, with the devil, you think he's your friend, he hates you too because you're created in the image of God. He's just trying to destroy you, kill you, and um, steal from you. But I see it all the time, and I'm always being reminded that that could have been me to this very day. God said, if it wasn't for his grace and his mercy upon my life, I would be the same way. So I can't point a finger, but I can direct people. Like I could point to a direction that they may find the Lord or the Lord may find them. Actually, God is always present, but you know what I mean. So make things right with the Lord today as you have today. You could be right now in a relationship that you know you need to get out of. Although it might be hard to break out of it, but with God's help, you can break out of that relationship 
People, you might be struggling with um, sexual addictions. You might be struggling with drug addiction. You might be struggling with greed, that you want more and more and more of the bad stuff in your life. Or you could just be in impurity right now. And you, you think you have no hope. Trust in God. Hope in God. I did it. I'm glad he gave me the opportunity to do it in the year 2001. And no matter how many times I look at the scripture, I'm like, wow, this has to be true. There's no other way that God has rescued me, changed me, transformed my life, and broke me free from sexual addictions and impurities that I used to always be in, involved in. It was like waking up and washing your face. I used to wake up and live in sin. That's how natural it was for me. But now it's like, nah. Temptation is still there, but with every temptation, God makes me realize that I can literally look at the temptation now and say, nah, I'm good. God is good in me, so I'm good. I don't need that no more. Amen? And it's the greatest power. It's the more exciting way. I know it doesn't show up in my face a lot that I'm really excited. But hey, I am excited knowing that you could be free from sexual morality, impurity, and greed. So that's all I had. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for hanging out with me for this time. I know this was like a little bit awkward morning Devo, but God put it on my heart. Um, usually this is something I would do at my on the blaze and at 10 o'clock at night, but I'm giving it to you now, so maybe whoever watches this later um, could get this. It's definitely, definitely, definitely for somebody today to break free from sexual morality, impurity, or greed. Such sins have no place among God's people, period. God bless. Love you all. Peace.